Good morning, church. It's good to be with you today. I hope this finds you well. I've been thinking about all of you and and certainly uh, continue to lift you all up in prayer. And and know that if you all need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you have prayer requests, just uh, need a a listening ear. Uh, And as I have the last several weeks, um, uh, encourage you to continue to reach out and uh, uh, and call one another. Uh, Just see how each other's doing and um, and report to the, the church if there's anything that is needed uh, for you or for a loved one uh, or a dear friend, and we'd be glad to, uh, to do what we can to, uh, to help support and, and carry each other through this season that we find ourselves. A few things uh, to help us carry each other through this season. Uh, one, uh, know that you still can get a mask if you need a mask. Uh, Amber and the Kiffany family have... Uh, uh, very generously uh, donated the, uh, the mass and uh, you just uh, make arrangements with me to, to pick them up and we can make sure you get one or I can drop them off, whichever is easier for you. Uh, also, uh, we've had four uh, very generous invitations to, uh, uh, to go and, and hike on, uh, on parishioners' farms. Those details are in the weekly as well. It's a, a beautiful time to go out and see uh, nature coming alive and, uh, and we're a little bit uh, more secure sometimes when we're uh, on a, a place less traveled and these properties give us the uh, chance to go where we're not likely to run into lots of other, other folks and um, keep us and them safe, but also uh, enable us to go out and get out of our homes and enjoy nature. So uh, please take them up on that. I know that they are very, very earnest uh, in making that offer uh, and it's a very generous one. Uh, Speaking of generosity, uh, we've been called on uh, to to show our generosity. Uh, The the, uh, public school system and the FISH program uh, have asked us uh, to uh, put together snow day packets. Uh, What's a snow day packet? Well, uh, normally it's a packet for uh, students who depend on on their time in school for uh, healthy meals. Uh, it's a time for, for those students when there is no school, uh, usually because of a snow day, uh, to be able to have a meal that they can take home uh, for themselves and often for their families. And uh, what uh, is going on now is that the school system, even in its absence of, uh, of having in-person uh, school, is providing, uh, I believe, over 8,000 meals a week uh, for families. That's a, a huge, huge undertaking. And Uh, One of the saddest parts about that ministry is when they run out of food, Uh, when people have been waiting and uh, in one instance, 20 minutes after uh, they opened, they were all out of food. And uh, and one of the ways that they can keep from sending uh, families uh, home hungry uh, is that they can give them, uh, when they run out of food, uh, those snow day packets. Uh, And so uh, if we prepare uh, an ample number of those packets, uh, those can be there to, to, to help provide food when um, when the, uh, the cafeteria service is stretched too thin. So I encourage you as you read all the details in the weekly uh, to please uh, consider uh, giving uh, uh, generously. Uh, I uh, uh, went online, went to Amazon. Uh, I know it, it's always nicer if we can get uh, most of the supplies locally, um, but if, uh, if there's shortages or you're having uh, trouble, no, uh, we'd much rather you do that than go into several grocery stores. Um, but uh, safely uh, acquire these materials and maybe you can see if uh, some of your uh, fellow parishioners are able to acquire uh, different materials and we can put these all together. And then when you do that, you can bring these, um, these packages uh, and you can put them on the, the porch uh, uh, right by the school entrance. There's, there's bins that will be set up there uh, and then we can make sure they get to uh, uh, the people that need them. So please consider doing that. And then uh, another act of generosity that we ask you to consider is that this coming, uh, I believe it's Tuesday, uh, but May 5th uh, is the Give uh, Local Piedmont Day. And uh, it's a day where um, where your dollars can go for, can go further uh, as you give to those um, uh, those community organizations that do such meaningful work, including our own uh, Learning Starts Early and several other organizations that we're partnered with uh, throughout the course of uh, the year. So please consider giving generously on that day as well. Um, and with that, we begin our service. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Happy Easter! The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son, Jesus, is the good shepherd of your people, 
Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Jeff Sable, and as you can see, I'm sporting my COVID-19 hairstyle and my best attempt at a Father Ben beard. I'm going to lead the prayers for the people this morning and ask that you join me. Let us pray. I ask for your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan and Jennifer, our bishops, and for Ben and Ted, our clergy. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people especially for Donald, our president, the Congress, and the Supreme Court of the United States. We pray also for those in the armed forces, their families, and all deployed in harm's way, especially Mark. Additionally, we pray for all of those on the front lines of this COVID-19 crisis, our doctors, our nurses, and healthcare practitioners, our fire and rescue and police forces, and all people striving to overcome this COVID-19 virus. Pray for justice, peace, and perseverance. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble, especially Barbara, Karen, Judy, Helen, Carol, Steve, Bonnie, Ormany, Kristen, Steve, Judy, John, Joan, Kay, Ansel, Tina, Linda, Fred, Kay, Ed, Peter, Marie, and for those whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for all those who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for St. James Episcopal Church and School, our Stephen ministers and their care providers. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died and those whom we now name either silently or aloud. I ask your prayers for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for the faithful and growing relationship between First Baptist Church and St. James Episcopal Church. We give thanks for our many blessings, which we now name either silently or aloud. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. From wherever we find ourselves, we offer our prayers to you, the God who promises to abide in us. During this time, may we know and trust your presence in our lives. Continue to bind us together. Embolden us as your church to be signs and agents of your hope, your healing, and your love. We pray this in the name of your Son, who came and dwelt among us, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 
A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them because they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. About 64 years ago, Miss Benny Hamilton, who was my teacher at the Warrington branch of Calvert School, required that all of us learn the 23rd Psalm. I can remember standing on the stage in the parish hall at St. James Church and reciting it. And for the past 64 years, I have been glad that I know the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He, re he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I do not know what theologians would accept as a precise definition of what revelation is. But for me, revelation is that moment when some shepherd who had heard stories of Yahweh, the great Yahweh of Mount Sinai, with the thunder and the lightning, with the tablets of the law, this same Jewish shepherd who had heard those kind of stories about God, also had a moment where it seemed to him that that same God revealed in such awesomeness and divine power was also a God sort of like himself as a shepherd. As he had lived with God, he sensed that God had been a kind of leader, a protector, a friend, a companion. Those shepherds in those days would throw their staff in front of where the sheep were, and the sheep were trained to follow that stick wherever it landed. The shepherd would see a pool of water, throw the sick stick towards the pool, the sheep would follow, and they would drink. Somehow, through what we would call the promptings of the Spirit of God, that shepherd boy, perhaps King David, thought, God, God is my shepherd. 
I love the 23rd Psalm. It has been my companion when I have been sitting with people towards the end of their lives. I have read it many times in Episcopal funerals. I've heard it read. It sustained me as I was taking a kind of unsettling ambulance ride this past fall to an emergency room, and it came to my mind and was a great comfort. One of the great things I learned about the 23rd Psalm several years ago has to do with the way it ends. Miss Benny taught me the King James Version, surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But upon subsequent study, I've also come to understand that that verb follow can also be rendered pursue. And I fell in love with this possibility. Surely your goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life. I love the word pursue. It has an intentionality. It has a sense of action. It has a sense of purpose. It even has a sense of kind of obsess obsessive love, the kind of love that searches and hunts until one is found. Surely your goodness and mercy shall hunt after me, shall pursue me, shall find me, and when I am found, I am embraced, carried, held safe. Surely your goodness and mercy shall pursue me. And so because I'm a preacher, when I hear an insight like that, I have to help the folk of God know what that looks like. What does it look like to be pursued in the sense of the shepherd who searches for the sheep? When I was in New Hampshire about 20 years ago, I, uh, an event occurred where a young child, a three-year-old child, had been picnicking with his family in the White Mountains. Somehow he became separated. How this could have happened, I don't remember. He became separated and was lost for several nights in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Search parties were formed. People came from the region to help search. And after two days and two very chilly nights in those White Mountains, he was found. He was found by a firefighter from Boston whose name was John Brignoli. I will never forget the name. Brignoli had been motivated to join the search. He had been motivated uh, to pursue this little boy uh, because he found out that the missing child also like his son, uh, experienced the reality of autism. And as he was searching those woods in the White Mountains, he heard a familiar kind of distress sound, a distress sound very much like his own son would make when he was perplexed or distressed, a kind of whimpering, a kind of grunting, and he went towards that sound, that familiar sound, that sound that he had pursued so many times and found the little boy who was lost, somewhat dehydrated, but ultimately fine. We live in a world where we see pictures of pursuing love. We see pictures from New York City of nurses and doctors that show up every day for their long, demanding 12-hour shifts we see the first responders, the ambulance drivers, uh, the people who go to apartments, risk their own health to pursue those who need a life-saving trip to medical care. We see people who show up in our food stores every day to be sure that the country is fed. We see all sorts of examples of searching and pursuing love. At St. James, many of us talk to each other on the cell telephone as a way of reminding the congregation that we are searched for, we are pursued, we're not forgotten, we're not alone, we're not isolated. And in that sense, I think we are following the Good Shepherd, we are following pursuing love, we're trying to imitate it in our own life in this moment we find ourselves in. Another thought that I want you to consider with me are the kind of two different experiences that the psalmist narrates. The psalmist says, 
Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I experience your nearness. I think those are evocative words at this moment in our life. I just wrote a letter of condolence to my daughter-in-law whose grandmother, her beloved grandmother, died alone in a nursing home of COVID-19 without family, without her friends sustaining her at the end and supporting her at the end. Many of us are now, as this disease progresses, we know, many of us know more and more people who have been directly affected, and we know more and more people who have suffered the pain of not being close to the ones they have most loved in this life in their final hours and moments. And so we are experiencing the valley of the shadow of death in very profound ways. And I think we need to be gentle with each other we need to be supportive of each other. We need to be attentive to those for whom that is their reality. But it also occurs to me that some of us also in this season where so many are suffering such deprivations, many of us are deeply aware that even in the midst of this pandemic, our cup is running over. It, that is your situation. If you are still blessed with resources, a roof over your head, if you are not lined up for the food bank as a needed recipient, then perhaps you with me are pondering the fact that even now your cup runs over. Your cup runs over with the goodness and mercy of God's provision for you. And if that is your situation, if that is your situation as it is mine, then I think that running over that abundant cup must be shared. We must think as stewards, perhaps in ways that are more radical than we have ever thought before about the responsibility of the, being a person in this moment whose cup is full to running over. I think we have, if that is our case, then our, our reality is meant to be another person's blessing. And if we feel that we have been pursued and found by uh, a pursuing love that will find us and never let us go, then it seems to me incumbent upon us that when our cup runs over, we turn that abundance into pursuing love as we generously respond to those in need. May this Good Shepherd Sunday be a time for you to reflect on that moment when some shepherd found that God was like a shepherd. We know that Psalm 23 was hymn number 23 in Jesus' hymn book. I love the fact that Jesus probably sang Psalm 23, and perhaps singing that psalm changed his own self-understanding where he saw that he would be not only the recipient of pursuing love, but its instrument as he took the hard steps up Calvary, and as he went to that cross out of pursuing love for the least and the last and the lost, for you and for me. May those of us who have been the recipients of such costly searching, as our cup runs over, may we share and join the search as we bless others with the abundance that is still, even in this time, our own reality. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen, he is risen, tell it out with joyful voice. He has burst his three let the whole wide earth rejoice. Death is conquered, we are free. Christ has won the victory. Come, ye sad and fearful hearts.
parted with glad smile and radiant brow. Death's long shadows have departed, Jesus' woes are over now, and the passion that he bore, sin and pain can vex no from the Tenor household. We are very fortunate to be able to, to have this opportunity to say how much we miss everyone. I especially miss the um, wonderful Sunday school department at church and I miss my partner, Sonia. I wanted to give a shout out to Jen. She's been doing an incredible job of bringing Sunday school lessons to the children of the church every week. Bill and I also miss the worshipers from Thursday morning. They're an amazing group of people that get together every Thursday at 7.15 and it's a perfect way to start our day and we miss everyone from that group as well. I tell you, the, the situation, the coronavirus situation we find ourselves in remind me of a blizzard in, way, in the way that the, the children are out of school, the only people going to the work are people who have to go to work. When you do go out, there's no one on the road and there's no milk or toilet paper at the grocery store. But the good thing is that we don't have to shovel snow and we don't have to shave. As a matter of fact, if I put on my reading glasses, I swear if I didn't have a full head of hair, I'd be the spitting image of Father Ben. Oh, Lordy. I don't know if you see this halo that's over the top of my head that I've earned over the past 30 some years of living with this guy, but it's there. Well, before we go, Liz and I would like to share a bit of our lives with you. There is a, a, a pond about a half a mile down the road from our home. And we've gotten into the habit of walking down there on Sunday morning um, to watch the sunrise. And we listen to a few hymns, and we read some scripture, and it's uh, and we watch the sunrise in all of its glory, and it's a a very incredibly reflective time, and the serenity and peacefulness that we find helps us to remind us of Saint James on Sunday mornings. It also gives us optimism for the new day so that we can move forward and spread God's love with those that we share a day with. It also reminds us of the sunrise within us today as we move forward um, in our situation. Um, we feel that we're beginning to see some orange come through the tree trunks. And we are completely confident with God's assurance that the sun will start to break through those treetops and we will have a beautiful new God-given day, one full of hope for the new and unique experiences that it will bring, just as we anticipate the same for St. James and all of our community. We cannot wait to see what beauty and hope it will bring for all of us once again when we're able to gather. We hope everyone has a great day, and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you all. Remember that life is short, and we have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind, make haste to love, and the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our worship is now ended and our service in the world begins. 
let us go forth to proclaim that Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Hello, St. James from the Blandford family. Hi. Hey guys, Hi. miss you. We miss love you. you. We miss you. We miss you. I hope I hope I see you soon. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye.